So I have been hearing about this project for many, many years, and you know, you guys are finally there, and you're seeing it, and you're with George and other scientists. And I guess my question is, um, did it seem more or less feasible, more or less plausible, more or less achievable, and and what kind of resources are going to be required? That's a perfect question because I was sort of going there looking for that, and. Part of it is the sheer competence of the ZMOPs, both of them, and the, the, the depth of time and commitment that they've made there, that they've got the beginnings of a real life demo of you know, what had been an essay in Science Magazine some while back. Uh, when you have a density of animals on the land, it really starts to change in the way that one would be glad of, and there's all these more animals. So basically, the land coming back to life but that sheer competence they have. I mean, they're in such an impossible situation all day, every day, <laughs> from our standpoint, that the fact that they can surmount, I mean, Nikita has stories to tell of, you know, getting through the snow and almost dying and being in a situation where he's lost, he's not sure he's going in the right direction, he's frozen. All this, they all have stories like this. And so these are insanely competent characters. And I, trust their science, and I trust their capability to carry it through. At a completely different level in the lab, I feel the same way about George Church. So this particular project is in such good hands, and the science, I think, is so well proven at this point that I believe it will all go forward. Is that I, I, I think, it, for me, it was, it was both sides of this equation. Where both I was stunned to find out how realistic it was to do the kind of the basic science of this project. And I was also <laughs> stunned at how massive the scale of the problem <laughs> is and how immediate that tundra melting problem is. Um, it was literally the summer that we were there that, and the week we were there, the, pub, the paper was published around the frozen layer, not uh, huge portions of it, not freezing. And you, you know, after you fly 10 hours across Siberia, you're like, wow, there's, there's a lot of stuff to do here. So um, if so you look out at all of that landscape and flying over for 10 hours and think, all of this landscape is becoming a greenhouse gas problem and might be converted over time into a greenhouse gas solution, that's big. And it doesn't even include northern North America yet, but it will. I don't have much doubt that a mammoth will be resurrected and that it even could have the effect of clearing Pleistocene Park. I think it's another level of belief to, to imagine it you know, spreading across all of Siberia. I mean, it could, but that's, that's just another question. So I think, I think there's different levels of success. And I think, um, I think the success, the, the close success of making a version of a mammoth and having it have an effect within that area, I think that looks like it's kind of could really happen. Whether it takes off or whether it has the total effect that everybody wants, I think that's much, un, much more uncertain. But I, yep. I think the first thing seems very plausible to me. Jason and David, what did you see? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're asking a couple of millennials if we can edit genes, and I think <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, to us that's natural, right? Like we just grew up in the era of seeing computers change rapidly, 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 and so this feels very natural as part of like our timeline. And, witnessing technology. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think for us as filmmakers, you know, I think the, uh, the thing that we're, that we know that our audience is going to be asking is that sort of Jurassic Park question, right? You spent so much time <laughs> thinking if you could do it, you didn't stop thinking you should. <laughs> Slam the table. Well, to us, there's like so much more interesting ideas there. Should we? And what does it mean when humans both decide to do it, to go forward with that? Or if we decide not to, we choose to select not to use technology to try to safeguard the planet. I think there's just so much there that just, there's not clear answers, but it should be talked about.